Welcome to another message from Columbus First Assembly. Thanks for listening as we strive to learn and live the Word and ways of God. Our hope is that you're encouraged by today's message. Well, let's uh, go to God's Word today. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. It's a promise that was given to Noah after he came out of the ark after the flood. Seed time and harvest will never cease. That's a promise that we have. But I want to tell you something. I almost missed out on the promise to harvest this spring because of something that I did. Let me, let me tell you the story. Um, in February, I uh, usually begin to plant some flower seeds. I have a special flower that I like that uh, you can't really buy at the uh, garden centers. I found them once, and after that they weren't available, but it's a, it's a flower that produces seed. In fact, I have some of the seeds right here. It's a compact zinnia, and in mid-February, I always get out some, uh, well, actually I just use some egg curtains, and I plant the seeds because by the time April, mid-April rolls around, the, the seedlings have now grown enough and they're, they're big enough to put into the ground. But unfortunately, uh, I forgot to plant my seeds and that's why I've entitled the message the way I have. So it was only two weeks ago. And two weeks ago, I remembered that I needed to plant my seeds. So what I did was I got out my, my uh, egg cartons and I put the potting soil in them and I started spreading seeds. But as you can see, I'm sure they're getting a close up with the camera. As you can see, these are barely sprouting. I'm a month behind. These plants should have been so large that they would be in individual pots right now. But some of them are just barely coming up. But oh well. I'm going to be a month behind. It's not that big of a deal. So what's one month of having my plants a little bit smaller? But after I planted my seeds and after I watered them and got them ready, I actually had a thought. And that's what I want to talk to you about today because while it's really not that big of a deal if I planted my flower seeds this year, I mean, if I would have totally forgotten to plant my seeds, I wouldn't have had these flowers, but I'd have gone over to a garden center and I'd have bought something else and it would cost me maybe $20, $30 instead of just a little bit for potting soil. But here's the thought that came. The thought that came is, what if I wouldn't plant my financial seeds during this season? What if I'd forget to plant those or, or fear would keep me from planting them? Then what would happen to my financial harvest on the other side? And that's what I want to talk to you about because I'm very concerned that there, during this time when uh, the finances of the nation and even the finances of the world seem to be in crisis that some of us are going to be tempted and I know we're going to be tempted because I've been tempted to pull back. But this is not the time to pull back. This is the time to plant because we want to have a harvest in the future. Listen to what the book of Malachi says in chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 8 through 12. Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vines cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. You might be saying, Pastor Rick, I can't believe it. At this time, you're going to preach about tithing and giving at a time when the economy is so shaky, yes, I'm going to speak about tithing and giving. I can understand how you feel. But I have to admit, if maybe I was you, I might be feeling the same thing. But hang with me. Hang with me because this is on my heart because your future blessings depend on what you do today. And so I'm going to just walk you through a little bit of this text. The seeds that you do not plant today cannot give you a harvest down the road. The seeds you do not plant today cannot give you a harvest down the road. Plant nothing now, there's going to be no harvest later. 
But if you plant in obedience now, if you sow your financial seeds in faith, there will be a harvest later. God can be trusted. You know, as I was driving recently, I went by some fields that have been prepared. The uh, tractors have been out and the field has been plowed and gotten ready. And they're going to be putting seed in the ground here very soon. Just as, the, just as the farmers trust that God is going to take the seed that they plant and bring them a harvest of corn or soybeans. Um, we need to trust that God is going to send a harvest our way as we do what he says in the planting of our tithes and our offerings. As we give them in faith as a seed, God then takes that seed and multiplies that seed and brings a harvest into our life. Har uh, farmers plant with an expectation of a harvest. You need to plant with an expectation of a harvest. But if a farmer chooses not to plant a field, they can't expect a harvest in that field. That's just the reality of seed time and harvest. It's a natural law. It's also a spiritual law. Now, you know, I was talking about my, I was talking about my flowers. You know, so I've got a one-month delay. Again, it's no big deal. But if my financial seeds are not being planted, what is my future going to be like? Because God says that he's going to bless if we do what he says to do. If fear keeps me, if I forget, then I should not be looking for a harvest. Sure, God will want to bless me and there will be some blessings, but the blessings that God promises in this passage are only for those who follow his commands. Let me do uh, three quick points today from the text. Going back to verse number 8, Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me, but you say, How have we robbed you? in tithes and offerings. Point one this morning is this. You rob God by keeping what he declares is his. When you don't return the tithe, it is stealing. God has declared that the tithe, the first 10%, is his. It is his, it's not ours. He gives it to us in our salary and in our pay. It comes to us, but then we need to return it. If anyone keeps what is not theirs, it's stealing. Even if the other person doesn't need it, let's just face it, God doesn't need your money. But he has asked for it because it is his, and he's doing it so that we can grow in our faith and so he can bless us back. Listen to what the contemporary English version translates verse, verse 8 to say. You people are robbing me, your God. And here you are asking, how are we robbing you? You are robbing me of the offerings and of the 10%, and listen to what it says, that belongs to me. You rob God by keeping what he declares is his. Secondly, you rob God of the opportunity to bless you. Our God is a gracious, compassionate father. He is a father who loves to bless his children, and he wants to bless you. But the blessings that he promises here in Malachi, the blessings that are tied with the tithe and offerings, he can only bless you with if you do your part. This is a blessing that is based on a promise. And this is a promise that is based on a condition. And God cannot lie. This is a blessing that is based on a promise. The promise is if you do something, then God will do something. And this promise is based on the condition. Bring the whole tithe, the entire tithe, the full 10% into the storehouse. That's a symbol for the local church. And then God says he will do some other things. He will bless you when you give the tithe. Now, I've had many people admire the flowers that I plant. In fact, there'll be some pictures of what these uh, compact zinnias that I'm trying to grow look like. And I've had people who have come to my backyard and they have looked at my flowers and they've really admired my flowers. And they said, oh my goodness, those are gorgeous. What are they? And how can we get them? And I explained to them that I found them once and now I've been planting them from seeds time after time after time. And they say, wow, we'd love to have uh, some like that. And I say, well, I'll tell you what, when fall comes around, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get you some seeds and I'll bag them up for you. And I'll tell you what, when you plant these, uh, you're going to get dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of plants and they're going to flower and the flowers are going to be gorgeous. They're going to flower all summer and they're going to last uh, in our uh, Indiana heat and they'll flower till the hard freeze comes sometime in October or maybe in November. Those are the promises that these seeds plant, um, will deliver and I promise them that. But here's the thing, what if they don't plant them? Did that invalidate the promises? Of course not. The promises are still true. These seeds will grow 
wonderful plants, and those plants will grow, and they will flower, and they will be beautiful. But if they don't plant the seeds, all of the promises that I made as far as what the plants will look like and how long they will last and that the plants will be solid and make it through a first freeze, all those promises are still valid. But if they don't plant the seeds, they're not going to have any of these beautiful plants and any of these beautiful flowers in their yard. It's the same thing with the promise that is attached to the, to the tithe. The returning of the tithe is what opens the door for God's full blessing on your life. It's also a test of faith. The returning of the tithe and giving offerings is the planting of financial seeds. And seed is always planted before there will be a harvest. Let me review. You rob God by keeping what is His, and you rob God of the opportunity to bless you. But the other thing that gets robbed is you rob yourself of the blessings God has for you. Listen, God wants to pour blessings upon you. He wants you to plant your financial seeds, the tithes and the offerings. He wants you to plant them, and then they're going to grow by faith. And if you do this, then comes the promise. The promise is, I will open for you the windows of heaven, and I will pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Do you know that when you don't uh, plant your financial gifts of tithes and offerings, you actually rob yourself of this blessing, a blessing that will be so large that there will not be room enough to receive it. You will receive a harvest, but that harvest cannot come if you have not planted the seeds. You actually rob yourself of the blessing God has for you. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And then Jesus said these words in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. That's a key part of this verse. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. The same measure. Let, here, let me illustrate it. Plant nothing, harvest nothing. Plant little, harvest little. Plant a lot, harvest a lot. Listen, whatever measure you use, if you're, if you're teaspoon giving to God, He has a larger teaspoon. He'll give back. But He wants to abundantly bless you. And that abundant blessing comes when you obey and you follow what He says. So what is this thing called the tithe? The tithe is 10% the first 10% of your income, and then offerings on top of that. That's the shovel. That's the measure God wants you to use. Tithes and then offerings, how much is your choice on top of that? That's what God says he will bless. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. If you fail to plant your financial seeds now through the tithes and the offerings, you will fail to receive a harvest later. You cannot reap something for which you haven't sowed. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says this, But I say... He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Whether the times are good or whether the times are bad, the amount of the tithe is the same, 10%. Now, I, I share this with you because I've lived this. Sherry and I have been through times in our life where uh, I've been unemployed, laid off, just like some of you might end up being or are right now. And what did I do when I was laid off? I did what you do. We, we, we cut back a little bit. I went on unemployment. Uh, Sherry continued to work. Uh, one time her hours were even reduced. But the one thing that we didn't do is we did not stop tithing. Oh, tempted to. Tempted to. But I had been a believer long enough and I had seen the faithfulness of God that I continued to tithe. Now, there were times where our bills weren't all being paid. But I still returned the first, the first 10% to our local church because I knew that I could trust God. See, he's my source. My job wasn't my source. The government is not my source. They are just tools that God uses. But he's my source, and he's your source. And as you return to him, I would return it to him with faith, sometimes fear mixed in, because I wasn't sure how we were going to make it. But I'd return it to him in faith. And now, years later, I could say that I have never been forsaken by God. He always came through during times when I had a meager salary during times when I was laid off and only collecting unemployment, during times when I had a good job. 
We return to God the portion that he claims is his, the tithe, and God has blessed. We have never been forsaken. My heart in talking to you today is I want you to keep yourself in the blessing of God. We sang that he's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. He does keep his promises, but most of his promises are conditional. And as I've already explained, this promise of the blessing that is tied to the tithe and the offering, this is conditional upon you sowing your financial seeds of faith. And it can be only received as you and I do our part. We return the tithe and give offerings first, and then we wait for God to bring the increase. Now the temptation is probably to say that, well, you need it now more than God does or the church does. No, actually, you do need to plant this because we're coming out of this thing. And I want you to come out of this rough time with a harvest waiting for you. But if you withhold that which God says is his, what you're doing is you're hurting yourself. You're robbing God, and then you're robbing him of the opportunity to give you a blessing, and you're robbing yourself of that blessing. Oh, don't be one who robs God today. Trust him. Trust him. I'm going to say this. You might think, well, pastor, you just want to get it for the church. I'll tell you what. If that is what you're concerned about, I would just challenge you. Then don't give it to Columbus First Assembly. But return your tithe to another local church. Because I want you in the blessings of God more than I want your finance coming into our church. So if you doubt me, if you think this is just about Pastor Rick, or it's just about Columbus First Assembly, or it's just about us meeting our bills, no, it's not. It's really about you. It is really about you. I want you blessed. So if you distrust me, but you want to test God, because God, this is the only place in the scripture God actually tells us we can test him in this. He says, try me, test me in this, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. So if you're thinking that this is all about Columbus First Assembly, then please, return your tithe someplace else, but return it in faith that God is going to bring you a harvest. So what should you do today? Okay, let me talk to you about that. What should you do today? If you got paid this week, returns got, return God's portion to the local church. If you got paid this week, return God's portion to your local church if you haven't already done that. Do it online or in mail since bringing it in person is not really uh, advisable right now. It's not possible for many of us. And then for you who have already returned the tithe, I want you to relax and know that God's got this. No matter what you're facing, trust that God's got this. If, fa if financial anxiety comes your way, feel free to hold God to his promise. You can remind him that you're testing him. You can remind him, say, God, you said I can test you in this and I'm testing you. He's not going to be offended by that. And you can say, God, I need a harvest. I'm trusting you. He's not going to be offended by that because he says, test me in this. So if you've already returned your tithe, then relax. God has got this. And then expect a harvest. And then when you get paid again, return God's portion to your local church. I know it'll be scary if you're not already a tither, and it may even be scary if you are a tither, because this may be the first time that you and your family have walked through uh, a financial downturn, one this severe. I've been through other financial downturns before, uh, and I continue to tithe. Sherry and I continue to tithe. We have been taught, and we believe God, and God has been there for us. But this may be the first time for you, and you've been tithing up to this point, and giving of offerings, but now it may feel scary. Don't let the devil rob you. Don't get out of the habit of doing this. Uh, remember, your job is not your source. God is your source. The government is not your source. God is your source. And he has ways of getting resources to his children. So let's trust him. Let's believe and let's expect that a harvest is coming. God is encouraging you to step out in faith. God is encouraging you to test him in this. God is waiting to receive your seeds planted in faith and he will cause the harvest to come your way. Now, I don't have time to really develop a whole series on giving and finance, but there is more help available on this topic. I've preached on it before. So there's a graphic coming up that lists several previous sermons that I have preached in this. There's also uh, a book that Pastor Robert Morris has written called The Blessed Life. And uh, that would be something that would be very beneficial for you to pick up. Some of you have uh, some extra time to do some reading. It's available in all formats, Kindle and uh, all the device formats. Uh, you can get it on audiobook. 
uh, probably even available to borrow from the local library if you can even go to the library and borrow a book right now. So I encourage you to take a screenshot of this graphic so that you can look these items up on the church website so you can listen to some more messages because it may be that you are, uh, uh, this is really a new concept for you, but something inside of you, and I believe it's the Holy Spirit, is stirring you, is stirring you in faith that maybe you are going to, for the very first time, return to the Lord what he says is his, the tithe, the first 10%. That would be fantastic. I want to read to you once again Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. But I'm going to read it from the contemporary English version because I just love the way that this, uh, uh, these translators translated it. So listen again, and then I'm going to pray over us and over this passage. You people are robbing me, you're God. And here you are asking, how are we robbing you? You are robbing me of the offerings and of the 10% that belong to me. That's why your whole nation is under a curse. I am the Lord all-powerful, and I challenge you to put me to the test. There it is again. Listen to it. I am the Lord all-powerful, and I challenge you to put me to the test. Bring the entire 10% into the storehouse so there will be food in my house. Then I will open the windows of heaven and flood you with blessing after blessing. I will also stop locusts from destroying your crops and keeping your vineyards from producing. Let us pray. Lord, as we face very uncertain economic times, Lord, we don't know what to do, but we depend on you. And we believe that your promises are true. Lord, we will stop if we are. And for those of us that are not, we will not rob you. We will not rob you of that which you call your own, the tithe the 10% that belongs to you. We don't want to live with our finances under a curse. Lord, you challenge us to test you. There are some people this week that are going to test you for the very first time. And Lord God, as they bring the entire 10% into the storehouse, giving it to the local church so that there will be food in that house, then Lord, keep your part of the bargain. We're testing you, Lord. Keep your part of the bargain. May this congregation, may every single person who is hearing my voice and who is responding by returning the tithe, open the windows of heaven and flood their lives with blessing after blessing. Stop locusts from destroying their, uh, their crops and keeping their vineyards from producing. Well, that's an agricultural term, Lord God, but what that means is you're going to keep cars from breaking down. You're going to keep appliances from breaking down. You're going to have tires last longer than they should. You're going to keep our homes in good maintenance, Lord. You're not going to let the devourer, you're not going to let Satan get in there and start tearing apart our possessions and our stuff. Now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the blessings upon blessings promised for those who obey and plant the tithe and the offerings in the good soil by faith of you will reap a harvest of blessings. Thank you, Jesus, that you are faithful. We can count on you. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You've been listening to a message from Columbus First Assembly. We hope that you've been encouraged in your spiritual journey. If you're not part of a local church and would like to attend one of our regular services, our church is located at the corner of 10th and Iowa Street in Columbus, Indiana. Our Sunday morning worship services start at 10 a.m. and our Wednesday evening studies begin at 7 p.m. And while you're online, check out our website at columbusfirstassembly.org for details and information about our church. You will also find other messages and series that you can listen to or download. Thanks for spending some time with us and for taking advantage of this resource from Columbus First Assembly, where we strive to learn and live the word and ways of God.